back in 2017 time, former EC manager of, or, or, slash valet in ECW, Angel Amoroso, accused multiple multiple talent and other personalities, one particular wrestling jour journalist, accused multiple people in the wrestling business of, of, of sexual assault. And she, she, she alleges that, that, that with... In, the, in these cases that this that all these instances were this is when she was underage and with this um she, you know she had um posted quite a few videos around the time 2017 2018 time we're going to get into some of the clips and in one of them she's got a sign up here and we'll, I will play this shortly and it, it, she says my name is angel amoroso 20 pro wrestlers molested me when I was a 12 to 15 year old child in the 1980s and 1990s. Hashtag me too. And with this, with the story, and I'll first say this, this wasn't a story I remember coming across at the time in late 2017. And I certainly think that if I did come across it, I would have remembered this. It would have, it would have stuck out in my mind. And with this, one of the, the men she's accused of underage sexual conduct is is Mick Foley, and this this came out. So this is November two thousand seventeen. That Mick Foley was one person she she she'd accused of of having having sex with her, and this is when she was just fifteen. Um, and they said that they had reached out to Mick Foley for statement or comment regarding the photo, but they hadn't heard they hadn't heard back from him. Because what happened, Angel, Angel Am Amoroso, she um went to a book signing in 2017 a mick foley christmas book signing and this was in bethlehem pennsylvania this is late 2017 time this was just about a, a month after the me too movement and as people are going into this book signing to see mick foley um she's stopping but she's got a sign up and she's and she's very passionate very emotional saying that this was what what happened and that she was just she was she was only 15 years old when this allegedly took place and with this so i'm going to play the clip here and at the end i'll, I'll give you my um i'll, I'll leave some I'll, I'll give you my thoughts on all on all this stuff here so here we go Maybe he'll just spill the beans. He won't. He Maybe won't he can talk about Paul. No, yeah. because he knows exactly who I am, and he knows exactly what he did. Yeah, he, he knows, knows what he did, and he knows what all of his friends did. So why come out and acknowledge it now? And what I'll just are, let everyone know protected. what he did in case they don't know hey that Nick Foley had sex with a 15-year-old girl. Perhaps they would like yeah, to know yeah, yeah, yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Think I'm keeping my mouth shut about this anymore. I will not be shut up and I will not be a victim anymore. People need to know what kind of person this man is. And 
I am here to tell you what kind of person he is. The Harvey Weinstein of professional wrestling. Even worse. Damn straight. Think about worse. Harvey wasn't no kid. Even worse. <laughs> Who else we got here? You got to see McFoley? Don't do it. Don't bring your children to see McFoley. You got any teenage daughters? Keep them away from that pedophile. Oh He's a damn pedophile. Oh boy is right. Oncoming traffic. Mick Foley is a pedophile. Yes, read it. Thank you very much. Thank you for your support. It's amazing that no one stopped yet. No, it's, hey, they don't know what's going on. Hey. They're being very patient. Still bringing them in, though. I guess no one cares about their children anymore. Nobody knows. Yeah. It's a new day. Nobody knows now, but they're about to know. It's a shame that you're live. Yes. But, please. Any anyway, what? Live? Feel free to uh, spill all the signs. John Rankin's well, beautiful sign. And, okay. Uh, Tim Theory's beautiful sign. Hey, there is no excuse for child abuse no matter who you are and no matter what kind of star you think you are there is no excuse for child abuse and statutory rape is still rape so there's nothing that you can hide behind anymore you or your friends wow so as you can see there very 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 emotional um was angel there and with, with this you know You'd think some, you know, well, you know, why all of a sudden has, has she done this? You know, there might be the, the real cynical type people that would say, oh, well, she was just trying to, you know, jump on the whole Me Too bandwagon and that this didn't really happen and she's just some crazy woman with blue hair. Or that it could be the case of, you know, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, she was in the, she's, like, I believe she could be, she was living in the area. So Bethlehem, Pennsylvania is close to, very close to Philadelphia, I believe. And she thought this is the time now, this would be the time to confront him, to expose Mick Foley, you know, because Mick Foley, you know, was coming across this guy like jolly old, like St. Mick, and he does big things with Christmas and stuff, writing children's books. And she thought, well, this is the perfect moment to, like, I'm going to try and confront him or expose him to people and let people know, the, the, you know in her mind, what, you know, the real, the real Mick Foley. Um, I mean, it's some quite heavy accusations. And when I, when I first saw the name of Mick Foley, that that did surprise me. I mean, I can remember a story that Teddy Long told in a shoot interview about how I think it was, it was some kind of strange story of how Mick Foley got with a groupie, right? And and remember this, so he got with a groupie, so you assume that she would be of legal age, and he he he's he's making love to her. They're having they're having sex. And then he's like saying he's what in, he's in the room with Ron Simmons at the time. And he's like saying he, in Terry Long's telling the story about how Mick Foley is like get he's trying to hold Ron Simmons' hand. And he's like, oh help me, help me through this. Like, like he was like needing the support there. He's, he's met this girl, you know, really likes. He's want you know wants to want to have sex with her. And he's like, oh hold on, hold on. He's getting trying to hold Ron Simmons and Ron freaking Simmons' his hand. It's like oh. It's like for support it was strange kind of story but i don't know maybe there's a little bit more to that maybe more there's a little bit to that story it could be a little bit more than just you know oh you know innocent mick and he's naive when it comes to things like sex maybe but i mean one thing with this whole thing with this angel amoroso i've never i had never heard of her before until these allegations came out and yet she was in ECW, the original, you know, this is going back to like 1983, 1994 time, even maybe 95, like when it was going from like Eastern Championship to Extreme Championship Wrestling. And it is kind of odd, how come with this girl, Angel Amoroso, how come we've never heard, seen her, seen any footage of her in the documentaries, like your, the, 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 you know, the the ECW Rise and Fall one, or even the the Hardcore Heaven one. How come we've never seen any of any of her post original ECW? You know, maybe there's something to that there, because usually, you know, on these documentaries they document most people, almost everybody who was in ECW. 
for the most part, you know, even so on some of the stuff you'll even find that you'll hear you'll see stuff on S Jimmy Snucker. He was there going back to like ECW. He he was there in like 1993. But I've never seen anything of this girl Angel Amoroso, and maybe there is a good reason for that. Maybe just maybe there is. And there is another clip here. Another person that she accused is Paul Heyman. And what another very disturbing allegation was she she said that they were quote unquote he was dating her when she was just twelve, just twelve, because she was somebody that, so, so, you know, she was a big like wrestling super fan. She would go around the shows, meet the wrestlers, take photos with the wrestlers, and remember, think back to these times, right, when it was very much like it was the eighties, the Horsemen were super popular. It was the whole thing about the, the groupies, like even like when the rock scene, right? But in wrestling, they referred to them as rats. Referred to them as rats, as you know, you know, that's the wrong term right there. There's not that whole thing with rats and wrestling these days. Things have totally changed. But back then, that was that was you know that was commonplace. And so I'm going to play this this promo here that Paul Heyman, when he was Paulie Dangerously in ECW, cut, and he's bringing up Angel Amoroso. Who was there in ECW at the time? She was a valet. So I'll play this clip here. If you beat 911, I'll leave town. That's how confident I am. And as for that little tramp that you're running around with, who will tell you straight out to your face, she is the number one groupie in the history of professional wrestling. She will tell you straight to your face that the only difference between her and a streetwalker is that a until he gets paid for it. Let me tell you something, Angel, about your personal knowledge of me, okay? Even something, baby, this freaking big is gonna feel this stinking small and something that freaking wide. There you go. Class is always from Paul Heyman, right? <laughs> you, the you Hall of Famer. But with that clip, I mean, some people might say, well, that's just Paul Heyman at the t different times. And that's just how he was and how he t talked back then. But, you know, again, this is a, the, the guy is bringing up about, you know, a girl that he's, well, he, he's basically saying that she's just a straight up slut is what he's saying, right? And that, well, she apparently says that she's like the number one wrestling groupie or whatever. And again, I don't know, the, the whole thing with the groupie thing, like, like some girls i guess in rock and tell me if i'm wrong like rock is more like some groupies it's more just a thing of like they want to they're super fans they follow the bands everywhere and they want to like meet up with them and get an autograph and take a picture am i not even thinking that's the case with some groupies it's not all just a case of girls that are sluts that sl want to sleep with the band <laughs> but, but you know she just there's many photos out there you'll find if you google her name angel amoroso of meeting of our of her talent there but with this stuff with her she posted a video and i guess this is the whole thing of her gimmick where she was she would she would come out with a wedding dress and she has a video here she goes through all the wrestlers that she she alleges that molested her and this is when between the ages of from 12 to 15 in the 80, 1980s and the 1990s so here we go i'm going to play this clip right now about what was done to me when I was 12 to 15 years old, a child molested by professional wrestlers. Not only did I have this sign, one second, but also in my, uh, my, my wedding bridal handbag here that I have that's now useless. So I'm throwing that away. Since everyone asked, I had the names of all the people who abused me when I was a child. And I had all intentions on taking them one by one and papering the streets of Philadelphia with them. Since that's where it's all, most of it happened, I figured we would let everyone know, the thousands and thousands of people who were there know what happened. As easy as that, right? As easy as that, right? Now, as I was writing these out, my husband and my daughter took a look at this. 
and thought maybe with the thousands of people who attended, even in the two degree weather, that it may not be such a great idea for me to go out on the street, on Broad Street in South Philly, from Center City all the way to South Philly, and tell everyone my personal business about the wrestlers who are pedophiles who molested me when I was a child. I tried to get out the door several times and I was restrained by both Christina and my husband Patrick in order to not go to the mummer's parade. So I didn't get to tell my hashtag me too story at the mummer's parade as I wanted to. So I'm taking the opportunity to just do it right now because this is not gonna stop. This year has started and this is how I'm starting it. And every day of this year for the rest of my life will be nothing but this. You gotta understand, I'm not playing around. I was assaulted, I was raped, I was molested. This is no joke. Everyone gets to tell their story. I'm telling my story now. You don't believe it? You don't wanna believe it? Don't. I don't care. It won't stop me from saying what I need to say, what needs to be said, what I've tried to say a million times, and I've been stifled and put mental institutions over. This will happen no more. I will stay silent no longer. The statute of limitations will not discourage me to tell my story and continue to say what I need to say and let the world know about. So if you're sick of hearing me, tune out. Otherwise know that my New Year's resolution is to let everyone know what happened to me and what they shouldn't let happen to them. Right. So, we, I mean, with that, quite a few names there. And with this, you know, and I get some people will say they think that, you know, it's going to be this thing. I know that people will probably think that this woman is crazy. They're going to judge and think she's crazy. She has problems and that she's not telling the truth. But with this, with people that have had these traumatic experiences, a lot of the times it's, they have that thing that, you know, they're damaged. And when, when they're screaming out, they're crying out for help. They do have that thing where you know they're just shouting and shouting and very emotional it they can come off maybe not fully believable but i don't know i mean with with her with the specific names that she's mentioned and you just think some of them are just so specific like mike enos like i've never heard of that guy before you know like a job guy in wcw it's just like some of the names she's so specific with you think well to me anyway it's like god maybe there is something to this you know? And yeah, some of the names, that might surprise some people, but then there's other names you would think, well, you, you know, um, well, the, these guys, you know, they had, they, they were, they had a name, they, they were notorious for being big party guys. And so, but the question would be, you know, this stuff that happened that took place, you know, number one, well, was she really underage like she said she was? Because from doing a bit of digging, doing some stuff online, some people have claimed that she has, she's exaggerated how young she, she, she actually she apparently was at the time. And that the event stuff with, I think, Mick Foley and Paul Heyman, those accusations that she wasn't actually underage. Um, but then, you know, did this stuff, Ha was you know if you know if she was of legal age and regard you know let's say okay she was she was a legal age though but was it consensual um 
And yeah, but I think as well, like just specific names, and some of them do surprise me. Some people who I, I was, you know, I I I was, you know, fans of. You know, I I was I'm a, I would say I'm a big Ultimate Warrior guy. So that name that does shock me. I have to be honest. But there could be something to to what what she's saying. And I'm, I'm just thinking with the stuff with Mick Foley. You think with if it was out there and it was out there on the internet sites, you think. Well, wouldn't Mick Foley have said something? Would would he have not threatened legal action against her or something? And apparently, what happened? That Shelly Martinez, who played that aerial character in WWE, she messaged Mick Foley about this woman and about these allegations that she had. And he asked, and she asked him. They were they were, they were, they were friends at the time. She asked him, "Is this true?" And I think Mick Foley said something along the lines of to Shelly Martinez. She has mental issues. Never contact me again. And I think blocked her and that was that. And you think, well, maybe he would have that reaction to someone that he deemed a friend, even asking him about these things. If he felt that she knows him, you know, let's say it didn't happen and that he thought that she knowed him, that she, she must know him well enough to know that he would never do that. But at the same time, you know, you've been accused of this. You didn't do it someone you know asks you they want to know you could just say no no this didn't happen this didn't happen at all and gives a bit then a little bit elaborate a little bit a little bit uh, an explanation and that's that so his response you could say is a little bit questionable there and but then again you know the whole thing about you know i don't remember reading this as a story back back in 2017 time and i'm, I'm i'll usually once a day at least look at what's going on in the, in the wrestling world but see the use and i didn't i don't remember this story and you just wonder because there was a name on there dave Meltzer, and you think well a lot of these guys that have their websites are probably quite buddy buddy with Meltzer, and their marks are Meltzer because he was the reason that they started their own website and you think well did they make it a point not to report on this story because a lot of these people, they, they aren't reporting on the stuff, you know. You've got a couple of the websites that report on the whole Caitlin Triple H rumours, but none of the other guys touch it, you know. And that's, you know, they've got a relationship they want to keep with WWE. They don't want to burn that bridge. And I guess they want to keep in, maybe they wanted to keep in Meltzer's good books. They didn't report on that. So the, like, the Meltzer name, you think, God, you, you don't think Meltzer is that kind of guy. But but she's got a Facebook page and she had said something like she was, she had been, she had been, abused groomed and trafficked and you know we're hearing that word with vince mcmahon about sex trafficking that's the big thing right and you think of all these names multiple names it's like is that what happened was she trafficked was she passed about wrestler to wrestler you know maybe that's what it was um but there's another story here which is quite disturbing with angel amoroso talking about how she was hurt by tommy dreamer after a match and from looking at this photo here if you look here, it looks like with Tommy Dreamer, who's wearing a Cactus Jack t-shirt, has his foot over her face. And I believe that with this, the way she was dressed up initially, I thought, Christ, that looks like a straight jacket or something. But this is like a wedding dress gimmick that she wore. But she just discusses getting hurt by Tommy Dreamer in a match. So here we go. As we had all the matches leading up to the one at the arena, which would be the main match, it, which was myself and Tommy Caro and woman with Sandman against uh, Tommy Dreamer and Mick Foley. Have to check. Whatever you want to call the douche is, you know, up to you. So uh, before the match, we discussed, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll put it all out there because I've told this story many a times. We, we discussed exactly what was going down. And I was fine with everything because everyone around me and, and even Tommy Cairo, we knew that the, the match at, ended at the cane shot to my head by Mick Foley. That's it. That was the end of the match as far as we knew. Okay. So everything worked out uh, just fine, you know, during the match, not so much for Tommy Cairo, unfortunately, but he has his own complaints that we could get to about the match and tell you about what he suffered through that match as well, um, with just people not listening. So as we get to the end of the match and after Mick Foley canes me 
and the entire building pops as expected, that was supposed to be the end. Right? I popped, I won't lie. Okay, so, and that would have been enough for you, right? That would have been enough to, to yeah, just see that's that. the end and, and it comes back so, to bam, that's it. And that's it. And that's on TV, everyone's seeing it just cut to that. And Tommy Dreamer would try to this day deny that he did anything at all because it wasn't oh what is is it on film did you ever see it on film well they have it on film they just didn't show everyone else but i got the pictures so i posted them all over the place tommy dreamer after mick foley came me in the head you know and i'm laying there bleeding he decides to get the cane and i'm sorry after tommy dreamer came in i'm sorry he he, he, he picked up the cane and opened my legs up. First, he kicked me in the face a couple times, which I have a picture of, totally unnecessary. I didn't even know he was coming near me after the match. And then he picks my legs up and opens my legs up real wide. And, and I, like I said, should have known something was weird before the match because when we were discussing it, they were joking around and they were like, don't wear underwear. And I was like, why would I wear underwear? And I really just don't wear them. And I used to wear like these thigh high stockings, you know? So I was like, well, my legs are protected. So no big deal, you know, don't wear underwear, whatever. It's, it's a crowd. It's, there's no children in the crowd. So this ass clown gets, gets me and, and opens my legs up and holds them up and gets the cane and whacks me between the legs. And like, you know, I, I'm not sure if you're familiar with being hit with a cane or not. Oh, but yeah. They have like little ridges in them that mm -hmm. if you get like certain loose skin, it will grab around and pull back, you know? So that's exactly what happened. When he hit me in my private part, it, it you know, it pulled back and, and snapped. And then, and like, I, I was, but you could see the blood on the bottom of my dress and people were like, is it, that's from your head? And I'm like, mm. you know, I couldn't even like, I, I didn't even know how to say anything or, or tell anybody. And when we got back to the locker room, he was like, I, I'm not even sorry about that because it was great. Thanks. Was just gonna ask wow. So that's quite a, a fairly disturbing story right there. I mean... With a guy like Tommy Dreamer, like the way he portrays himself as kind of like the Mr. Nice Guy who gets along with everybody and will always be, have that thing like he's passionate for wrestling and when he's doing promos, is very emotional. But intentionally, you know, you know, kicking kicking a female in the face when she's down defenseless and she was selling like, the cane shot previously and then lifts her legs up and whacks her in the private parts. He's in touch, he told her, he made that point, tell her, don't wear underwear out there. And, like, that, that is pro proper messed up if that happened. And from looking at that photo, if you see it here, it looks like he's, well, his foot looks definitely, looks like it's over her face. Now, that's not to say that necessarily he boof, kicked her, stomped her, but that doesn't look good, though, when you think about it. You know, certainly for, you know, the image that Tommy Dreamer likes to put out there. But then he got kind of exposed when he kind of, you know, made light of the whole thing with the allegations, the whole thing with Ric Flair, the plane ride from hell. Um, and, but yeah, I, I don't know what the reason would be for that, that, you know, why he wanted to do that to her and assault her. You know, a, a, a grown, you know, a grown man, you know, grown man dreamer, who was, I think he was 24, 25, he would have been at that point, assault, you know, going into business for himself, you know, a, a, you know, assaulting a, a, a woman, who's doing the job, doing part of the, the whole thing after the match, selling, she's down in the ground, and, you know, he took advantage of that. Like, that, that is proper messed up. That's proper disturbing right there. And, see, that, that's the thing. As much as, like, that whole thing with that culture back then with ECW and, the, like, and Heyman always wanted to, like, portray ECW like the, they're the kind of, like, the underdogs and, like, like the, 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 the WWF and WCW were the big bad guys, but that that was a proper messed up like place there with with talent doing whatever and 
wasn't professional, let's really be honest. And and a lot of bounce checks, a lot of people got screwed over. And yeah, there, there was a lot of bad stuff there at ECW. Okay, it might have been very entertaining at one point, but there, there, there was there was a you know a lot of shady characters came out of that place. And I'd, I'd say for this stuff is from what she's saying is true. And she seemed much more. She wasn't like shouting and ranting like in the video outside the bookstore. She seemed quite calm and when talking about this. Um, but that that sounds pro proper messed up there. And maybe I don't know. They just picked on her, and then after that, you know, she she didn't go back to ECW after that. That was that was it. She was done. And but then you know, never know. Maybe there is a reason they don't talk about Angel Amoroso. You never hear about her in these in these retrospective documentaries with ECW. She's never brought up. I've never seen any footage of her. Like it seems kind of odd that she's almost been kind of like I don't know, like black black you say blacklisted from the wrestling industry like i don't know sounds awful sounds strange so maybe there's something to all this stuff here maybe just maybe um but that's that's it for now guys so feel free to like hit the subscribe button and give me your take let me know your thoughts are on this and let me know did you know about angel amoroso had you heard about these allegations before and what do you think do you think there is truth to this stuff the people she's accused of the stuff that she's accused them of doing or could this all just be made up and, and there's some some major issues there she has and she's just she's made all this stuff up and, and just telling lies um but that's me for now guys thank you very much bye